For the second time in a year, I've had to go and get a processor that AMD just doesn't want to sell to us. You see, under this cooler is one of AMD's latest APUs, but you cannot purchase it at a retailer. AMD hasn't sold an APU direct to consumers since the 3200 and 3400G. I had to go above and beyond to pick up this 5600G that we're going to be reviewing today. So instead of having to order the chip from Hong Kong like I did with the 4750G, I instead had to buy an entire PC to get it. This is the HP Omen 30L and included in it, it had the Ryzen 5 5600G. As you can see, it doesn't have the chip in here anymore because I wasn't able to actually test the chip in this system. Since for whatever reason, HP didn't want to include any display out on the IO of the motherboard. So while it was easier to get my hands on the 5600G, I still had to go through a process to even use it by itself because I had to swap it over to my own B550 motherboard thanks to this pre-built not having any display outs. So in total, this system cost me $12.99 just to get my hands on this chip right here because it includes the 3060, 16 gigs of RAM, and a whole host of other stuff. But I was only really interested in that chip right there. But as if that part of the story wasn't frustrating enough, you can no longer buy this system on Best Buy. If I go back to my original purchase details, you can see that the image is coming soon because the product is no longer linked to whatsoever. If you wanna find an HP Omen 30L, well, you can get it with a Ryzen 7 3700X, or you can get it with a Ryzen 7 5800X, but you can't get it with the 5600G anymore. You can still pick it up from new Egg, but as you can see, the price is a nice and toasty $2,000. So suffice it to say, this chip was a pain in the butt to get my hands on. But now let's talk about what this thing actually is. This is the Ryzen 5 5600G, like the 5600X, it has six cores and 12 threads. It has slightly different clock frequencies. This has a 3.9 gigahertz base clock with up to 4.4 gigahertz boost, as opposed to the 4.6 gigahertz boost on the 5600X. However, just so you know that I am not going to be testing the 5600G versus the 5600X in this video, that will be in an upcoming one where I test a discrete graphics card with this guy. This is gonna be a review standalone of the APU by itself, no graphics card included. So let's go ahead and talk about how it compares to previous APUs then. The Ryzen 7 4750G, while having eight cores, actually only has half the amount of L3 cache that this chip does, coming in at eight megabytes. The 5600G has 16 megabytes of L3 cache, but the 5600X has 32 megabytes. So there's a clear differentiation under the hood of what these chips are, but this is running the latest Zen 3 process but it's missing a few things, such as the fact that it only supports PCI Express 3.0, which means that the NVMe drive that I'm using to test this chip can only run at three gigabytes per second, as opposed to the seven gigabytes per second that it's rated for. And under the hood of the GPU, we have seven compute units, as opposed to the 4750G's eight compute units. And this one is running at 1.9 gigahertz, whereas the 4750G's were running at 2.1 gigahertz but the chip is unlocked for overclocking. So get subscribed because we're gonna be doing both the 5600X versus the 5600G, as well as overclocking the 5600G in a couple videos coming up. But all of this is featured in the 65 watt TDP package of the 5600G. If you're ready for some numbers, this thing stays remarkably cool. Under testing with my 240 millimeter AIO, it never got above 50 degrees Celsius, whether the CPU or GPU or both were hitting 100%. This thing stayed in the 45 to 47 degrees Celsius range, thanks to obviously the Zen 3 process and the more refined Vega architecture. This thing actually doesn't need all too beefy of a cooler to actually run. So now I know you're wondering, how does it actually perform? I tested the 5600G as an APU, which means that you see no GPU in here because it's all 
in the chip right there. All of the games that I'm about to give you benchmark numbers for were run at 720p resolution because that does seem to be the sweet spot for APUs even still at lowest graphical settings. But I tried to make sure that I was testing some of the most modern games to show you just how competent this little chip actually is. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we managed to get 47.9 FPS. Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption 2 got the exact same score at 47.9 FPS. In Fortnite, we got eSports level 142.5 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 actually ended up running at 31.7 FPS average. Devil May Cry 5 came in at 79 FPS. Crisis Remastered came in at 67.9. So yes, this 5600G can run Crisis. Metro Exodus was 60.3 FPS. Valorant ran at a fast 238.7. The Witcher 3 coming in at 54. Death Stranding at 53.1. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 65.9. GTA 5 coming in at 136, Call of Duty Warzone coming in at 65.5 FPS, Assassin's Creed Valhalla coming in at 45.1, and finally Borderlands 3 at 61.1 FPS. Now let's just do a brief comparison of numbers to the 4750G so you have an idea of how the latest APU stacks up against the previous top king APU, which was the Ryzen 7 4750G. So it's actually kind of a mixed bag. Horizon Zero Dawn, the 4750G wins by 8%, but in Red Dead Redemption 2, it loses by 11%, and it loses by 13% in Fortnite, and 29% in Valorant, and 5% in Death Stranding, and 13% in GTA 5, probably all likely due to the fact that the 5600G has a much better CPU under the hood. The 4750G beat the 5600G by 3% in Crisis Remastered, another 3% in Witcher 3, and 18% in COD Warzone. So it's actually a toss-up. Even though the 4750G has two more cores, it's on a previous architecture, but it also has one more compute unit in its graphics setup and runs at 200 megahertz higher. But the 5600G, since it's the latest process AMD has, can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. I'm actually really curious to see how the 5700G performs because the 5600G is almost too good. And while we're talking Talking about CPU, let's look at Cinebench R15 scores because that's the only number I have for the 4750G. The previous gen Ryzen 7 got 1976 in multi-core, whereas the 5600G got 1720. So it's within 13% performance, even though the 5600G has 25% fewer cores. For single core performance, we got 220, which is better than any other APU that I've ever tested, comparing that to Tiger Lake as well as Ryzen 5000 on mobile. And in Cinebench R23, we got some of the best single chip scores that I've seen. Again, this is just talking about APU is coming in at a multi-core score of 10,470 and a single core score of 1,402. The only APU that's beaten the 5600G in that single core Cinebench R23 score is the MacBook Air's M1 chip, if that gives you any indication of how far Apple's actually taken their technology. It obviously loses in multi-core because it has four low performance cores, but in single core performance, even AMD's best all-in-one chip can't beat Apple's. So the Ryzen 5600G is a great chip. It gets nearly 60 FPS in modern titles. Again, it's 720p low, so it's not exactly the cream of the crop, but we're just talking about a single chip here. No graphics card required. It wasn't as hard for me to get my hands on this as it was the previous generation APUs from AMD, but I still, even if you can explain to me OEM economics and how it makes more financial sense for AMD to start shipping these to system integrators, versus selling them direct to consumers, it really makes me sad because this is a great chip. I would love to see it at retail. I think consumers should have bigger options of getting APUs. And the fact that I had to buy this as part of a pre-built and then take it out is kind of frustrating. I would have rather picked this up by itself from a retailer and then plugged it into my system at home instead of having to go this bass backwards way to even get it. But in case you wanna see the full review of the Ryzen 7 4750G, you should check Check out this video right over here and remember to get subscribed for the showdown between the 5600G and the 5600X. I'll see you in the next video, friends. Cheers.